Hello. Um, so like a couple weeks ago, um, I think it was like two or three weeks ago, I had this really weird thing happen um, where um, I was listening to an audiobook. Um, I believe it is The Wisdom of Yourselves uh, by Bruce H. Lipton. Um, so he's a, he says, and is like an epigenesis and a quantum physicist um, who taught uh, at university level, like medical students. Um, but is it doing that right now? Um, regardless, he has a lot of books and I had stumbled onto um, one of his that was like a really good deal. I think it's regularly like $80. It was an audio lecture series. Um, and while I have been kind of like obsessing about this research about like all these different problem areas in my life, um, that was the main thing that kind of connected all together and made my brain like kind of freak out because I had found in my head like the missing puzzle piece or like a lot of missing puzzle pieces. Um, he had like the data that I needed to back up, um, like the missing connections that like I wanted or you know didn't have or had lost or whatever. Um, and so um, one of the biggest transformations that really scared a lot of people closest to me was that me being an atheist for I don't know eight ten years um, after being raised Mormon, um, my whole family still being LDS. Um, I kind of went like the opposite direction and have stayed there and have kind of like maintained that like hey I get that you're that way but I'm gonna be over here different and um, that is just gonna be a thing so I understand it's hard for you understand you know you don't really like it and you don't understand but um, it's just a thing that's happening and so that's like obviously like um, something in our family that like would kind of like separate us um, and obviously we couldn't see each other's perspective even though we could like a, in a lot of ways um, and so I want to talk about that because it's like the weirdest thing to say and um, I don't like the word God. The word God is like a negative connotation to me. It makes me feel like uncomfortable. So um, I might use like other words that are like, I don't know, power or like energy, like, you know, light, um, I don't know, something of the sort. So just know that um, I might use the word God, but it's not my favorite. Um, and so I need to find like a better way to say that. Um, so where to start? Um, so basically, you know, a reason I never believed in God is because, well, I, okay, I did for like the first, you know, 18 to 20 years of my life, even though I had stopped going to church, I don't know when I was, um, like, 17 or something, I don't know, 16 or 17, and I had stopped liking it for actually quite a while. Um, and um, so one of the biggest things was that I kept finding like principles that like the LDS church believed and taught and then that kind of radiated out more towards like general Christianity and then like other um, religions or sects, you know, whether they be fundamentalist or not. Um, there were just always these things I was like, there's no way that's right, that just doesn't make sense. Um, and so, um, there were a lot of things that kind of like led up to that. Me like finally stopped going to church and then like a few years later me being like, I don't believe in God, there's nothing, it just doesn't make sense basically to me. Um, one of the biggest things, and I've said this a lot recently, just kind of um, trying to like go through like this maze of my life, but um, one is I just remember being really young and if you're, you know, whatever, if you're LDS, you know, I was in primary, it was like, I can re just remember it so vividly because it was just like, um, I guess really weird for me is I was like sitting there and like they were talking about faith and it was like faith the grip like the size of a grain of like a mustard seed or I don't know whatever um and me being like okay but like how do I have faith and that question like never being answered but nobody really having that question so I felt like I was like super weird and like obviously wasn't getting something really basic because I didn't know how to have faith but it seemed like faith was like the solution to every problem and so I was like okay well now how do I believe like I just like need more to just believe you know and so that was like something like really really young and then that's like the first thing I remember being like okay well, this is weird and then like a little bit as time went on you know whatever bible verse or concept me being like yeah that doesn't really make sense to me like um until like you know I got into high school um and there was something earth shattering where I fell in love with a girl and had a girlfriend and it was like the biggest no and um it didn't feel wrong to me and so that was something that I was like, okay, I get that you think that that's wrong, um, but it's not wrong. It's just not, like, I don't know how to explain it to you because you're over there and I'm over here, like, 
loving this girl and there's nothing wrong or bad or evil or gross or weird about it. It's just normal. Just like a man and a woman who are in love. It was like me and a girl in love. It was good. Um, and so that was like a really clear escape for me to be like, oh, okay, well, here I am. And I'm obviously not a part of that anymore. I am, you know, like I'm dating a girl. Um, and so it was pretty, like a pretty signifying thing that happened for me. And then like that just progressed obviously in like a lot of different areas where I was like, oh, that doesn't make sense. And this doesn't make sense. And you know, it's cussing, it's clothes, it's I'm immodest. It's I shouldn't be showing this body part. I shouldn't be sexualizing this, you know? Um, tattoos, piercings, um, the language, you know, it was just like all these things that like just really didn't make sense to me. Um, and so if that didn't make sense, then the baseline of God telling someone to tell us that meant that that was wrong, like uh, just like a cause and effect thing, like, okay, well, that can't be right if all of this is wrong. Um, just from my like logical perspective without like actually having the logical fallacies laid out in front of me to say like, oh, this is exactly where it's wrong now, let me backtrack and try to figure it out. Um, although I was pretty actually well versed in logical fallacies, um, I could see that something was missing, I just didn't know what and I didn't know like how to find a solution because it was just like, well, this is either right or this is wrong and I was like, well, that's wrong. So, um, so I'm 29 now and so we'll just say that it's been, you know, roughly 10 years that I've considered myself an atheist, even though I think it's like a little bit less, uh, maybe eight or nine years that I've kind of solidified that. Um, I've gone back and forth between like agnostic and atheist, like, well, there's something, but that's not it. You know, it's, there's probably a God or something, but that's not the Christian God. Um, so, and then I stumbled, um, you know, in my, you know, I've done manual labor, um, I clean houses, so I've done that for several, you know, like a lot of years now. And I usually just listen to music, and when I got sick of music, I would try different music, and then otherwise I just turned it off because I'd be like, oh, that's just kind of like annoying right now. Um, and my mom would always be like, hey, get an Audible, like listen to my Audible account. Um, you know, there's all these books, I think you'd really like it, I think you'd really like this one. I was just like, no mom, I just, you know, I just want to listen to music. Um, until I was like, oh, I have this Audible account. <laughs> I don't know when that was, a year ago or something of the sort. Um, and I was like, wow, these books are really good. Like, this is really cool. I have almost like unlimited information, right? Like directly into my ears. Um, and then I was kind of able to pick up on like, um, how I could increase the speed. Like, if it's more of like a fiction, um, you know, I can't really do that, but if it's, um, like a textbook kind of thing or like a lecture series they talk slower you know like in person you kind of talk slower as you're explaining and so i could speed those up and get through like lecture series um i could get through like a single lecture series on a specific topic like i did um existentialism um and then i can't remember the exact name of that course but it was like yeah something about existentialism um and then there's one about like the history of language um and then what is the last one that I did? I don't know, I was getting all kinds of like books. There were some that were free. There were really good deals. I got, it was like $100 for a year. So the books are like eight or $9 per book. So um, anyway, so um, I was listening to like all these things. I was like, ooh, I could do like child stuff with Delilah. Like what is it, Montessori, unschooling. Like I could get into health stuff. I could get into, it's like, oh, hello, psychology. You know, what do I want to focus in on? I can't, I'm not gonna get all the books. I only have so much time. What do I want to focus on? Um, and then my mom had recommended this book to me called Blue Dreams by Lauren Slater. And it was like a deal of the day, I think. Um, and I just bought it because it was so cheap. And it was like a really, really good decision. Um, I'm really glad she recommended it, although she hadn't like fully listened to it herself or maybe not at all um, from what I remember. Um, it was basically like um, a book from a, I believe she's a psychologist, uh, either that or um, like a licensed um counselor you know like a master's degree um regardless and she's breaking down um like the chemical composition of drugs um well not well okay the word is um interchangeable but um she's breaking down lithium and like all of these different chemical properties and all these studies and um it was like a lot of data that i really needed um because i was really curious about that i've been on a lot of this and haven't been lately um although i have been on medicine for narcolepsy i hadn't been on anything uh, for like my mood uh, for such a long time, like anxiety or depression or anything like that, um, mood stabilization, but it was just so interesting to hear. Like, it was so well written and so informative to me. It was like, just like, I keep saying the words, but like life-changing. Um, it was like exactly what I needed. Um, and then that led me to have like more questions, but I also wanted to verge out onto different book topics. So one was like Janet Lansbury, um, 
one of her books, No Bad Kids, that's the one I've listened to. Um, it was like super good. It was exactly what I needed for like boundaries. Like um, I had a really hard time with boundaries. Other people, um, but myself, like encroaching on other people and then knowing when to say no and how to say no. Um, and that really helped me with the like morality of a boundary, which is um, like the way it is with toddlers is, is there's just no morality at all. It just is. If there's a firm boundary, um, you can't touch that heater. You can't um, touch my body. You can't run into the street. There's just no morality there. It's just no. It's just simple. It's neutral. It just is. Um, and that really helped me with a lot of like life things because that's not only applicable to a toddler, but to adults too. Um, and so that really helped me with like all of my life, like how to, how like people respond to certain things, how to stay calm, how to be kind and gentle and understanding and like when to, you know, do, you know, I don't know, comforting and just to, you know, not abandon also, um, and how like people respond to, um, really stressful situations in really weird ways, but, um, to know that and then also to, um, just understand that's a stress like response, um, and then just get through it like as easily as possible um and so that was really informative and I don't even know how it spiraled out of control but then I'm on like my Instagram which is like mostly informational and I found like I follow all these weird people um or weird whatever uh names um but somehow I stumbled onto a holistic psychologist um Dr. Nicole Hero maybe I don't know um about her name on Instagram is the holistic psychologist and she had so much good information. At first, I was, like, kind of thrown off. I was like, well, that's weird. It was something about gut health and um, mental health. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Like, if that could be a thing, then I would be, like, healed. You know? Um, it's just not that simple. It's just not that simple. And I was like, wait a minute. Have I ever had a healed gut? What does that even mean? Like, how do I heal my gut? Have I even ate clean enough or healthy enough for an extended amount of time to have my gut be able to be healed? Um, and so... I was like drawn in by my own like um, defensive response and also how she had just so much information that really helped me and I was like this is just a really big deal like this changes like the way I view life and it almost all just started happening around the same time um although you know that slowly happens you know throughout everyone's life and mine obviously um and um somehow through her I stumbled onto I don't know if I clicked on her and one of her followers followed Bruce Lipton but regardless somehow I got to Bruce Lipton um, the epigenetics, quantum physics guy, and he basically ties in every single thing, everything. It was like psychology, it's God, it's this, it's that, but it's the facts behind it. And so, um, that is basically how I found out, um, made all of these, like, it seemed like my brain just started firing off all these connections. And I was like, this is what I needed. These are the answers that I needed. These are the answers I didn't have about God, you know, all of these questions, all of these things that seemed, um, that, you know, churches were assigning morality to that just aren't, you know, whether that be modesty or my body, and I'm like, my body's not sexual unless I'm engaging in sex or it's towards something who I'm, you know, someone I'm having sex with. Um, I have a really big problem with modesty and bodies. I just don't find the implicit, bad, like sacred, I don't know if that's the right word, hidden. I just feel like that's wrong. I feel like um, if my body's good, then my body's good like there's nothing I need to be covering unless I feel like I want to cover it um, and I don't I don't think there's anything secret about my body um, and my body is definitely not sexual um, at a standing or sitting or engaging in regular activities um, so um, with his um, book I just started like as I was listening to it it's like I couldn't stop like bookmarking it and there was just so much as far as like the genome and the epigenetics behind um, how we think that we're just born with our genes and then we just stay that way and like oh well too bad like that's just the way it is um it turns out that that's like a huge fallacy and genes are actually very malleable we obviously know gene mutations they can uh, mutate at any time they can be turned off and on at any time and basically what he's saying is there's absolutely nothing random about it there's absolutely nothing random about evolution there's no um such thing as like things happening for no reason which is kind of something i have been saying for a long time is like show me evil. Like, what does evil mean? Where did you come? Like, how did you get evil? Like, I, all I know is cause and effect. So what caused Satan or Lucifer to become evil? Like, it, is it just innately his personality? Like, how did that happen? Did he do something wrong? Like, we all do things that are wrong. So it just didn't make sense. There's like so many like loopholes, like so many um, holes in the story. And um, that just really helped me know like cause and effect. Like, um, you know, people aren't evil for no reason. People aren't just evil. 
people do bad things, bad things or hurt other people for reasons. And um, that's kind of like pretty basic, like cause and effect psychology, like people hurt people, hurt people, you know, like um, if you were molested, you're going, like there's this huge chance you're not, you're going to. There's just really good chance um, that you could um, or that people who do molest, like they have been molested before, maybe that's the more appropriate um, link. And um, so, and then there's like the quantum physics, which is science, like physics, uh, mechanics. Um, that's like how things operate. Um, and obviously like all the machinery behind it, but the like solid data behind it. And that being tied into um, like the mystic and the mysterious and the unknown and God and, um, you know, whether that be aliens and UFOs. And it was just um, hearing that book, just, I, my brain wouldn't stop firing. And I knew that I had found solutions to problems I had been searching for my whole life. Um, why me and my family are different from each other. Why, how we vary so much. Um, how there is science behind God. Like, mind-blowing. And I just started acting and speaking like a lunatic. Um, just, I think, because of my heightened brain activity. But I was so excited. Um, because I'd found all these answers. Um, and I just couldn't say it. Like, I didn't, at that point, have the ability or the knowledge to, like, level myself out and be like, okay, so here is a solution to this problem. Here's a solution to that problem. This you've been struggling with your whole life. This is a problem that's happened within the last year. Like, um, and so within that I had found basically, um, which eventually I'll get to like a graph, um, that I probably didn't construct, but found because I don't think that I could, um, you know, with like science, um, and, um, like, I guess the laws of this, like, planet or this universe or whatever, those, like, like the science is just like we find it it's already in place for us so let's say we'll just take this LDS perspective um something I was taught which I can find the good in right now or you know where I had always found that bad at least the last 10 years or more um I can see like the truth and the truth is um some like so I'll just say it um I believe the truth is we did choose to come here I do believe that we are creators I do believe we came from light like this energy, we are energy, and we are celestial, um, we are infinite, we do want to stay here and create here, we've been a lot of different places, created a lot of different um, lives and, um, you know, have different goals, like here, you know, we want to perfect this, um, this earth, this um, situation that we have created, we want to stay here and perfect like the physical realm. And, um, so there's a whole lot tied into that that I'm not going to get into because it just, like, is never ending, it seems. So I'll just say that, but I do think that people who stumbled onto that or were um, given that information, um, also probably unintentionally, um, said things that were not truth, which would be something of a sort of, you can only have one ear piercing. That's like a cultural norm, you know, that's not like a right or wrong, that's something that's like, well, right now it seems inappropriate to... Um, just like, you know, the way cultural norms are different everywhere. The American cultural norm is obviously not right. That's like a huge, huge ethnocentric perspective that is absolutely false, absolutely preposterous. Um, blue hair is not like a big deal. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really affect anything. Um, we are creators, so it's kind of cool we get to create like whatever we want to. Um, and morality is reserved for like a very few things. And so, um, that's my perspective right now. Um, I think it's really cool that I have this shift. Um, I don't think I went about sharing it in the right way or, you know, right, um, optimal way. I think it freaked a lot of people out, um, me being like atheistic for so long, um, although always wanting to have like the spiritual aspect and knowing that there's something missing, but not knowing like how, because it was just like seeming impossible. Um, and I think this is just like huge and transforming and I'm just like really excited to get into like more facts behind it and like, talk about it because it's really cool to me um i don't like i said before i don't like the word god um i do find jesus to have been um having the ability to like harness um like the energy or the power or the um, omnipotence of us if we are gods if we are creators if we are the light um i think he had probably um he probably i don't i don't i don't want to like solidify anything because i really don't know um Right now, I do think he probably was um, 
really close to God, um, or God, you know, whatever that means, um, and so I can see that now, and I can see, like, a lot of the good where I could only see bad, so anyway, um, that's that, I'll probably talk about that more, but that was just, like, this really weird thing that, like, people close to me are like, okay, that's cool, but that sounds weird, but are you okay? <laughs> so anyway, that's the link that I made, uh, those are the reference points, and I'll probably talk about it more soon.